Hello, in this video we're going to be looking at ways that we can brute force either directory names or actual file names on, on a website. Um, so in some cases people will hide directories or not link them to the website. Maybe it's a, uh, for an admin type page or, or for whatever reason. Um, so there's a variety of ways you can do it. Um, you can do it using a, like a web proxy. Um, but the easiest way, at least the way I use do it, is um, using a utility called DIRB. DIRB. Um, now, with any of these utilities, when I'm running them or testing them, the first thing I like to do is I like to run Wireshark uh, when I'm running them, so I can just see what output they're actually showing. So a lot of these utilities will have like a user agent string, which is easily uh, recognisable. Um, so you know, if, if you're running a pen test. Um, it will be picked up by like an IPS, so I like to run Wireshark when I'm testing it. I can just go back to it and have a look just, just to see what it's using and see if it's possible to modify that if we need to. Uh, so if we just run that in the background. Uh, right. <clears throat> just stick that on a HTTP filter. Right, just minimize that. Right, so Derby. Um, if we just run Derby on its own, that will give us a listing of all the uh, various options we've got. If we want to change the, the agent string, that will be a minus A. Um, there's a lot of options here that you can have a look for yourself. But uh, another useful one is minus Z. So if you're doing a pen test and you don't want to just blast uh, 25,000 guesses in, in 30 seconds, it's probably going to flag up. Uh, you can minus a minus Z and put the number of milliseconds you want per per. per brute force attack so yeah may, maybe you only, you only want one every five seconds uh, it depends on how long the pen test is and 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 how long you've got um, but that's, that's a useful option uh, so on in, in this current scenario I've got Apache 2 running on my machine uh, we just quickly go to the to the directory uh, all I have running under here is a uh, index.html file I've created a, a directory called secret uh, that's not linked within the website at all. If we go into secret directory, uh, there's just one file in there. It's called admin.php. So none of those two are linked to the website. So just by browsing it or spidering it, you, you're not going to find those. Right. So what I would normally do is run DIRB. Uh, you then need to specify the, the, the web address you, you want to scan. So in this scenario, it's HTTP. Uh, 192.168.1.70. That's uh, that's my machine. Uh, then you need to specify which word list you're going to use. So DIB comes with uh, a few word lists. Uh, we're going to use that in this scenario. Uh, so it's user slash share uh, word lists uh, DIRB and the one I'm going to use is big.txt. You can obviously use your own specific word lists. There is a a downloadable sec list um, from the from the Git repository. So um, that that has a lot of uh, word lists, not not necessarily just for web stuff, but have a look at that. That's def definitely a worthwhile download. But in this now, I'm just going to use the the one that's installed by default. Uh, so if we run this, it's going to um, just attempt the directories, uh, brute force and load directory names. So when you run this, depending on the size of the word list file you've specified, um, it's going to take anywhere from a couple of seconds to, to a minute or so, uh, depending on, I think there's about 20, 20 odd thousand words in that big.txt file. So it may take a, take a little while just to generate before it starts uh, attempting to brute force. Um, so just give that a second. <clears throat> Right, there we go. So it's all done alphabetically in this in the word list, so you can see as it goes through. What it's going to do is it's going to look, check to see if it can find any folders. It's found one there, JavaScript. Uh, it will go through and find um, all of, all of those at the the, the base level, um, and then it will go through and say, okay, right now I'm looking for JavaScript, and it will it will, re, it will run the scan again. So it's found our secret directory. So now it's now it's going to go through the JavaScript um, subdirectories, finding what it can. Uh, you can specify there's, there's a switch to specify you don't want to recursively do that um, so you can just ch check for the top level um, depending on the website you're looking at you may find there's you know there's lots and lots of uh, directories so you, so you might just want to 
check for a, spe a specific uh, directory level. Right now it's going through the secret. <clears throat> Just leave that to run for a sec. Well, if we just bring up the Wireshark trace while that's running. Okay, so we see all the guesses here. It's making a random file one, FRAN two. If we just bring up one of these, if you right click this, uh, follow HTTP stream, uh, that gives us all the HTML traffic. Um, might take a little while for that filter to come through. So, obviously, what we're interested in is: is there anything obvious that's going to be picked up by by an IPS stroke IDS device? Um, is there anything we can change? Is there anything obvious? Um, does, does, it look, does it look like normal HTTP traffic? That's obviously what we're looking for. It's almost there now, hopefully. Right, here we go. So here's all the guesses is making get random file. Okay, that looks okay. Host, where we're connecting to. This is the user agent. So this is obviously set as a Mozilla slash 4.0. Um, so if we're happy with that, we can just leave it as it is, or we can run the that switch that was mentioned in the help file and change it to whatever we like so maybe we want to run it as a an i11 um or, or or whatever we want to run it to but that, that's something we can change um so that's good to know there's nothing particularly obvious there but you know we can change that if we need to all right so we go back to the job running it's still running hopefully it should be finishing fairly quickly So what you can do, uh, one of the optional options is actually to output the the output to a, to a log file. Um, so if you're doing multiple multiple machines, or you, you know, there's lots of information there, you might want to output to the log file. I, I happen to know, obviously, that the secret directory is, is the only one listed um, that, that I've created myself. So we know it's found that already. Just give it give it a little while just to finish. Uh, another thing we can that you can use and have used before um, is, a, is a utility called WFuzz. Uh, you might have a look at that. Um, that is quite nice in the fact that it um, outputs stuff in in, in, in di different colours. So it makes it a little bit easier to read. Um, but you know, by all means, have a look um, if you want to use that. All right. Once this is finished, actually, we can just cancel that. Now we, we we know we found the secret directory we're looking at. Okay. So the next option. Um, maybe we know that it's a PHP type website, um, or we've run Nikto and it's you know flagging up as PHP files. Um, we're looking for admin type pages. So what we can do is if we just um, get the up arrow up, if we <clears throat> change the web address now to the secret directory, um, if we happen to know there's PHP files on there, uh, we can add a, a, a plus, sorry, no, plus minus capital. X uh, and then the extension you look for. So obviously if it's PHP, you're going to be PHP. If it's um, uh, OS, you may be looking for ASP top pages or, or whatever you want to search for. But in this scenario, we'll look for PHP files. So it's the same command, just the secret directory, and we want to look for extensions with stuff to start up PHP. So it's just going to go through that word list, append .php, and check for those files existing. So if we run that now.
well that's well that's well that's up and running uh, one, one of the options you can do obviously you can, you can obviously run this straight away if you're looking at a website or you can um, use burp or some other intercepting proxy you can run a spider on that website if you want to first uh, that may pick up certain directories um, that, that you then want to, to look at then so you can obviously just go in there specify the the the, the link and the the directory you're looking at and you know add the dot php um that's, that's, that's another option so if we look here yeah it's found admin dot php um with, the, with those twenty five thousand words you can obviously change those words around you can you know do what do what you like but just using that in the last five minutes we've managed to find that there's a secret directory and under that secret directory there's an admin dot php page um so uh, yeah i mean that, that's that's all there is to it um that's web some web pages depending on how big they are you can have a lot of information you may have to store it out to, to 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 file or you may want to look at the wfuzz uh, that's quite useful when you're finding a lot more lot more information but i hope you found that useful um please leave your comments and subscribe to the channel thanks very much cheers bye